Good afternoon, Mrs. Forrester. Hello, Robert. Hold on, Logan. Yes, Rich? What is it with you? What is it with me? What are you talking about? Don't get cute. I'm talking about the little stunt in the office. Oh, the kiss? Yes, the kiss. I was just making a point. You were making a play is what you were doing. Don't flatter yourself. All right, you want to run this company? Well, you better pull it together then. I am together. Except when you get me alone in some corner of the building, is that it? You'll never convince me, Logan, this isn't between you and me. Not you, Mother, Connor, or anyone else. Just you and me. I have a board meeting to conduct. How you doing? Fine. Mm. Well, I had a new patient this morning and another one this afternoon. I thought you said you were going to cut down on your caseload. One of these days. Did I give you much time? For what? That's your little project we talked about. Oh, Dad, there's always time for that. Any progress? Not yet, but we are going to keep trying. Keep it up. Oh, believe me, I am. What about you? I know that you didn't come over here to find out that I'm pregnant. Well, not totally, no. I, I was wondering if you had heard anything from Stephanie. Indeed, I have. What's she saying? Well, it's not so much what she's saying, it's the way that she's behaving. How's she behaving? Like a woman very much in love. That's good to hear. And how are you behaving? Like a man very much in love. But a man who doesn't know just how to take it from here. A command. Darla, I'll be right there. Just one second. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Dad, hi. Uh, oh, hello, I didn't Dad. know that you were home so soon. Yeah, I just came back. It was a short trade show. So how are you doing? Oh, I'm, I'm okay. Yeah? Considering all things. Well, what does that mean? Well, you know that situation with Connor Davis? It didn't turn out the way I was hoping that it would. What, is he still involved with Brooke? He asked her to marry him, but she turned him down. Well, that should open some doors. No, no, I am not going to wait for Connor or any other man. Now, I am the daughter of a very successful businessman, yourself, and so it must be in the blood. From now on, I'm all business. Hmm. Yeah, that's what I like to hear. Dad, you're going to be so proud of me. I'm going to turn Spectre Fashions around 180 degrees. Hi, everybody. Hello, Gorn. Honey, have you seen uh, Ridge and Brooke? Yeah, they're right outside the door. Doing what? Talking, I suppose. If you'd like, I could go check for you. Uh, I'll get them. Connor, why don't you just relax? Ridge and Brooke are going to have to talk to one another in the future, especially if she's going to spend a lot of time here. Of course, you could always encourage her to spend less time in the building. And why would I do that? Well. Perhaps Sheila could explain it. After all, she's our liaison. Um, I think what the Foresters are trying to tell you, Connor, is that Brooke and Ridge have a very long history together. And if you're planning on having a relationship with Brooke, maybe you want to I'm not. I'm not. Are we all here? Yes. Good. Let's begin. Thank you.
the bold and the beautiful. This portion sponsored by Crisco. Cooks who know, trust Crisco. Now listen, you taught me that if you want to really succeed at something, you have to commit yourself. Now that's what I'm doing. I'm committing myself completely to this business. You're hurt. What? You got rejected, it stings, and now you're giving up on men. I don't need a man in my life to be happy. But you need a relationship. Listen to me. You are very much like your father. You have his business sense, you have his avoidance of pain. Life is a risk. If you don't take a chance, you don't go anywhere. You miss out. Oh, you can avoid the pain and the hurt, but you miss out on all the really good things. You miss out on life, Karen. Please, don't do that to yourself. Don't make the same mistake I did. Let the record indicate that all the members of the board are present, including our newest member, majority stockholder, Brooke Logan Forrester. We'll waive the reading of the minutes unless someone has an objection. Hearing no objection, we'll move on to new business. At this point, I'd like to hand the floor over to our newest majority stockholder, Brooke. It's all yours. Well, not quite all. I'd like to start out with a statement. A brief statement, Brooke. We have a lot of business here. Actually, Eric, it's that kind of attitude I would like to address. Understandably, you all see me as the enemy. I came in here and I took better than half of your company. But from my perspective, I deserved it, given the scope of my contribution, namely belief. But we're not here to debate that. The fact is, I am now the majority stockholder. And for better or for worse, that's how it is and that's how it's going to be. I control Forrester Creations. But I can't do this all by myself. Nor can the company be a success without all of your contributions. I gave you the fabric, but the fabric means nothing without your creative input. That being the case... That being the case, where exactly are you going with this? Well, we all want the same thing, don't we, Stephanie? A profitable business? A working environment that contributes to our fulfillment, our growth, our needs, as individuals. Brooke, we already have that. Yes, Eric, but it can be so much better if we all stop fighting each other. So, what do you say? Can I count on you for being professionals? For doing the right thing? Doing what's best for the company that you created 30 years ago? Can I do that? You're not sure about how to proceed with Stephanie? I, I want to do more than just give support to her. I care for Stephanie. I want to help her. I want to help the family. The question is how? Dad, how could you possibly help the Foresters? Not exactly sure. I'm not either. Are you suggesting that you might work for them? Possibly. What about your job with Sally? All these years of bad blood between the two families, I'm beginning to wonder now why I ever worked at Spectra. That's exactly what brought us down the last time. Well, I would think long and hard before I get in the middle of all of this. Oh, I will, believe me. Hey, I did not come over here to lay all this on you. I'm really interested in how you're doing. I already told you. You know, I have, I have this feeling that there's more to it. More than what? My, my work? My relationship with Ridge? What, what are you talking about? A long time ago, you told me that you had two objectives. One was to cut down your caseload, and the other was to get pregnant. Now, neither one has happened. 
It takes time to get Brighton and Dad. And what about your caseload? Right now, work is good for me. Well, that's good. Why? It just is. I mean, if I get pregnant, I will definitely. Now it's if. When I get pregnant, Dad, I will cut back on my work, OK? Honey, hey. Is there something that I'm not aware of? Something that has to do with your being able to get pregnant? No, no, it's only been a couple of months. I mean, you have to wait at least a year before you can conclude that there's any kind of problem. But you're still worried. I can see it. I shouldn't be. I'm a doctor, and I know about these things. But I, I'm, I'm worried. And there's no reason, and there's no justification to it, but I'm really worried. It sounds crazy, doesn't it? Why? Dad, it's real simple. Ridge already has a child by another woman, a woman that really loves him. I just, I want the opportunity to give him one of my own. See, <laughs> silly old insecurity has gotten to me and I guess I'm just not as tough as I think I am. Stephanie, Thorne, Ridge, I'd like to hear your reactions to what I just said. I don't think the Foresters want to fight with you, Brooke. But you have to understand this change in ownership, at the very least, has been a very difficult adjustment. So you're saying that eventually they'll all come around, Sheila? Yes, Connor. Yes, I am. Hmm. And is she speaking for all of you? I'm not trying to speak for the Forrester family, but Connor. But you just said All right, Brooke, let's give you the benefit of the doubt and assume that you're sincere in wanting to run this company for profit and for personal fulfillment. Where does that leave us? Where do we go from there? Toward the successful marketing, creation, and production of Forrester Creations and especially the upcoming spring line. Status quo, in other words. In a manner of speaking, yes. In a manner of speaking? Ridge and Eric will design as usual. The marketing and sales will function as always, mm -hmm. and we will put on a fabulous show. The only thing that's going to be different is that I'm going to be overseeing everything. What exactly does that mean? May I, Brooke? Certainly. There will be only one significant change, and that is in the area of efficiency, or lack thereof. Brooke and I have studied the past few years very closely. The fashions have been wonderful. The production of those fashions has been mediocre at best. You want to explain that, Davis? Indeed I do. There's a looseness in the way this company is operated and run. I call it a lack of discipline. It seems as though everyone has a license to operate at his or her own pace. The result is chaos in the months prior to a showing. We're going to eliminate that. Are we indeed? Yes, Eric, we are. Henceforth, there will be a design schedule, a production schedule, and a marketing schedule. We already have those. They're never followed. Things come up. Things cost us money. So from now on, if a design isn't in on schedule, it will not make the collection. Oh, like hell. You can yell and scream all you want, Eric, but the bottom line is we're cutting inefficiency. Yes, this involves Ridge and you, and this involves all of us. There's going to be no more crazy last minute changes. This is a business, not a family party. And it's going to be run like a business, maximizing profits and minimizing inefficiency. Are there any questions? Good. Meeting adjourned.
Do you know what you should do? What should I do? Well, I think you should pick up the phone, call this Mr. Davis, and make some plans. Are you absolutely crazy? Now look, I may be down, but I still have a little pride left. This has nothing to do with pride. Well, it does to me. Connor's made it perfectly clear who he wants and who he loves. Look, I'm not going to go begging for attention, not from him or any man. And that is absolutely final. How did I do? You were spectacular. And you were sensational. Yeah, we gave him hell, didn't we? No question who's running this company. Yeah, that's for sure. Something we can do for you, Sheila? I'd like to tell you, Brooke, how much I admired the way you handled yourself in here today. You were cordial, yet you were always in control, the consummate professional. Anything else? Well, Connor, you were a bit overbearing, but that's just the way attorneys are. It's a good thing Brooke was here to offset that. Well, I'll uh, let you two alone. I'm sure you have a lot to discuss. Thank you, Sheila. Okay, congratulations, Brooke. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye. Hey. Thank you, too. All in a day's work, ma'am. Oh, I think it was more than that. Much, much more. Brooke. <laughs> what am I supposed to make of this? Just a woman trying to show you some appreciation. Last night, you refused my marriage proposal. I'm a little confused. Look, as I said, I'm here for you. As an attorney, as an advisor, we are gonna take this company to the top. Beyond that, our personal relationship has changed. We have different needs and different goals. You made your decision, and I respect that. Now you have to respect mine. All right, if that's the way you want it. But I don't think it is. I'm not going to pretend that I'm special to a man that I'm obviously not. You have no idea how he feels about you. Yes, I do. I'm passing thought. Yes? Karen? Hi. It's Connor. Oh, hi. Am I interrupting something? No, not really. What can I do for you? Well, you can have dinner with me tonight. Tonight? Yeah. My place. I'll cook. Oh. Say around seven. Sure, Connor. Seven. Great. Looking forward to it. Me too.